Welcome to Vantage with AI. All right, so in this video, we're taking a deep dive into Quen Image Edit 2511, the latest upgrade over the 2509 version. And honestly, this one brings some very meaningful improvements, especially around consistency. If you've used earlier versions, you probably noticed that while edits were powerful, things like identity drift, character variation, or multi-person coherence could sometimes be a challenge. Quen Image Edit 2511 addresses that head on. One of the biggest highlights here is significantly improved character consistency. You can now take a single portrait and apply imaginative or creative edits while still preserving the subject's identity and visual traits really well. Facial structure, proportions, and overall likeness stay intact. And this isn't just limited to single characters. Multi-person consistency has been pushed even further. The model can now fuse two or more separate person images into a single, coherent group shot with much higher fidelity, which is a big deal for compositing, storytelling, and creative workflows. Another major upgrade is built-in LoRa support. Over time, the community has created some excellent LoRas, and Quen has integrated selected popular ones directly into the base model. That means things like realistic lighting control or new viewpoint generation now work out of the box. No extra fine tuning, no additional setup. Beyond creative edits, this model is also clearly designed with practical use cases in mind. Industrial and product design workflows are much stronger now, whether it's batch product generation, material replacement for components, or structured design exploration. And finally, there's a noticeable boost in geometric reasoning. The model can now generate construction lines, design annotations, and geometry-aware outputs, which opens up some really interesting possibilities for technical and engineering-oriented workflows. So in this video, I'll showcase these features with real examples and walk you through a comfy UI workflow so you can run Quen Image Edit 2511 locally and integrate it into your own pipeline. Let's get started. Before we jump into the workflow, let's quickly go over the models you'll need for this setup. First up is Quen Image, Edit 2511 itself. You can download this model in BF16, FB8, or even quantized GGUF formats. That last option is especially useful if you're running on a low VRAM GPU, but still want to experiment with high quality image editing and generation. Next, we'll be using the Quen Image Edit 2511 Lightning 4-Step LoRa. This is a big one. It allows you to sample images in just four steps instead of the usual 20, which means much faster iterations without sacrificing too much quality. For text encoding, we'll be using Quen 25.7b VL, which takes care of prompt understanding and semantic alignment in this workflow. And on the decoding side, we'll stick with the standard Quen Image VAE, which works perfectly here. All the download links for these models are included directly inside the workflow, and I've also added them to the video description below so you don't have to hunt around for anything. And while you're down there, if you find this workflow useful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps support the content. All right, now let's walk through the workflow itself so you can clearly see what each section does and how everything fits together. We'll start with the model section. This is where we load everything the workflow depends on the Quen Image Edit model, the Lightning LoRa, the Quen Image VAE, and the Clip Text Encoder. You'll also notice that you can choose which model format to use here. Whether you're loading a standard Safeton Zors model or a GGUF version, you can simply enable the required model type and the workflow will handle it accordingly. Next up is the prompt section. This is where you define what kind of edit you want to perform, whether it's character changes, lighting adjustments, viewpoint shifts, or object level edits. Everything is controlled from here. After that, we move to the input section. This is where you load the input images you want to work with. You can load up to three images here, which is especially useful for multi-person edits, compositing, or reference-based transformations. You can also control the output resolution here. The resolution and aspect ratio are automatically derived from the first image you load. In this example, the workflow is set to about 1.6 megapixels. If you're running on a low VRAM GPU, you can safely reduce this to one megapixel or even lower, depending on how much VRAM you have available. Then we have the sampling section, which is where the actual work happens. This is the stage that runs the diffusion process and generates the final edited image using all the models, inputs, and settings we've defined so far. 
All right, let's test it. For our first test, we'll start simple. I'm going to use this sketch of a woman's face along with a very basic prompt. Change the image to a realistic photo of a girl. Keep it realistic and natural looking. Let's run it. All right, the results are in, and they actually look really good. The sketch has been transformed into a very realistic looking face while still staying true to the original input. The facial expression is closely preserved, and even small details, like the pearl earring, are carried over and match nicely to the shape and position from the original sketch. For such a minimal prompt, the level of realism and consistency here is quite impressive. For our next test, we'll move on to a two-character scene. Here, the goal is to use one man and one woman and see how well the model handles character consistency when combining multiple references. We'll start by loading these two reference images, one of a man and one of a woman, and use them to generate a single output scene. This is the prompt we're using. The man from the first reference image and the woman from the second reference image are having lunch together at an upscale restaurant. Keep their facial features, identities, and overall likeness exactly the same as in the reference images, with no alterations or deviations. Let's run it. All right, so these are the results, and honestly, they look very solid. Both characters have been transferred into the scene with strong identity preservation. The model clearly respected the instruction to keep facial features and overall likeness intact. You can see that the man's face structure, eye shape, and expression closely match the first reference image, and the woman's facial proportions, eyes, and overall look remain very consistent with her original reference as well. What's especially impressive here is how natural the fusion feels. Even though the two people came from completely separate images, they now sit together in a single scene without any obvious mismatch in scale, lighting, or perspective. The identities are preserved, the scene makes sense, and nothing feels out of place, which really highlights one of the key strengths of Quen Image Edit 2511. Next, let's test how well the model handles style and reference transfer. For this test, I'm using this image of a woman wearing a white top and a black skirt as the base input. As a reference, I'll use this close-up image of a tiger's face. The idea here is to see how accurately the model can transfer visual patterns and textures from a reference image onto a specific part of another image without affecting anything else. This is the prompt we're using. Change the design of the top in image 1 to match the pattern of the tiger in image 2. All right, let's run it. So this is the output, and it actually turned out really well. The model has successfully transferred the tiger's pattern and visual identity onto the woman's top, while keeping everything else completely intact. The black skirt, body proportions, pose, and facial features remain unchanged. What stands out here is how clean and localized the edit is. The tiger pattern isn't just randomly overlaid, it's been properly adapted to the shape of the clothing, following the contours of the fabric and the body. Lighting and shading on the top still match the original scene, which helps the edit feel realistic and integrated. Overall, this is a strong example of reference-based style transfer done right, precise, well-contained, and visually convincing. For our next test, we'll move into a more practical, design-oriented example. Here, I'm using these two images. The first one is a house with brick and stone walls, and the second one is a wooden house, which we'll use as the texture reference. The goal is simple, we want to transfer the wall texture from the second image onto the first one while keeping the architecture, layout, lighting, and proportions of the original house exactly the same. This is the prompt we're using. Change the texture of the walls of the house in image 1 to match that of image 2. Let's run it. Alright, so this is the result, and it turned out exceptionally clean. The model has successfully replaced the original brick and stone wall textures with the wooden panel texture from the reference image, while preserving the entire architectural structure of the house. The shape of the building, window placements, roof geometry, chimneys, and entryway are all left completely untouched. What's especially impressive here is how uniform and realistic the wood application looks. The wooden planks follow consistent vertical alignment across the facade, with natural looking variation in color and grain. It doesn't feel tiled or artificially repeated. The model also did a great job maintaining lighting and shading continuity.
Highlights and shadows on the wooden surfaces align perfectly with the original scene's lighting, which helps the material swap feel physically plausible rather than composited. Just as importantly, the edit is well contained. The wood texture is applied only to the walls. Elements like the roof, windows, trims, greenery, sky, and surroundings remain completely unchanged. For our next test, we'll try a multi-reference object transfer using three different images. The first image is our base image, the woman standing in the corridor. The second image is a red hat, and the third image is a handbag, which we'll use as reference objects. The goal here is to check how well the model can pick specific elements from multiple reference images and place them accurately onto a subject without affecting pose, proportions, or overall scene structure. This is the prompt we're using. The woman in image one is wearing the hat from image two and carrying the bag from image three. Keep the design of the reference images intact and don't change the pose of the woman. Let's run it. All right, so this is the result and it worked exactly as intended. The model has correctly placed the red hat from the second reference image onto the woman's head, keeping its shape, color, and fabric texture intact. The fit looks natural, and the hat aligns properly with her head orientation without affecting her hairstyle or facial features. The handbag from the third reference image has also been transferred cleanly. So that pretty much wraps up our walkthrough of Quen Image Edit 2511. We looked at a range of real-world tests, from simple sketch to photo transformations to multi-person consistency, style and texture transfer, material replacement, and finally, multi-reference object placement. As always, I've included all the model and workflow links in the description below, so you can download everything and try it out yourself. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what kind of tests you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.